Jack Arnold was my mentor. And uh, I met him when I was uh, just graduating with my master's out of film school. And I worked with him at his side on It Takes a Thief and other projects that he was directing. And one day he comes to uh, meet me and we had a bite to eat. And he came off a set of a movie called Black Eye, which was a film he was directing uh, in town. And Black Eye starred uh, the terrific guy, Fred Williamson. And Jack had in his hand a 28-page script called Boss that Fred wrote. It was a Western, and it was somewhat of a tongue-in-cheek Western, according to, to Jack at the time. And uh, he th said he wanted to see if we could make that into a feature. I had a very close relative of mine who was the assistant to two great guys who were accountants, Don Call and Dwight Call, who are the executive producers now on this film. And <clears throat> uh, it was at a time when black exploitation was really beginning to hit its peak. There were like 3,500 to 4,000 theaters throughout the United States that was just for black exploitation films. And these two guys, the Call brothers, were very interested in raising the money uh, for to make this movie uh, with Fred as the lead in the film and Jack as the director. There's a, a technique in producing that I learned from Jack that I now teach and I write about in my books, which is you, 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 you make the shoe fit the foot, which is you, you take what you have and you expand on what you have and you adjust everything for that, which, which is exactly what we did. We were originally supposed to shoot in Tucson, Arizona, at Old Tucson. Um, but that got too expensive. And I had worked on a picture called Cheyenne Social Club when I was at uh, Goldwyn Studios. I was a cost controller at Goldwyn Studios after I worked on It Takes a Thief with Jack. And I worked on Cheyenne Social Club. And it, when Cheyenne Social Club was done, and that was directed by Gene Kelly, uh, the studio built a street, a western street, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, on the Eves Ranch. So I knew that where there was a location. And so we scouted the location, and it turned out to be perfect. We just used the same set, the same street that was used on Cheyenne Social Club, so we didn't have to build a set. There's a couple of funny instances that, that I recall when we made this movie, and if you look at the film very carefully, you'll see them. One in particular is that there is a scene in the movie where Fred and, and Bill are having the big showdown. There's a big fight going on in the saloon. If you look very carefully, you're going to see the, the lanterns waving back and forth. What was really happening to cause them to wave back and forth was there's a dust devil going on outside of the saloon. Now, a dust devil is one of these little tornadoes that happens in the high deserts. And this particular one decided to happen right on our location, come right down our street. I was on the location that day. And when that dust devil was coming down the street, I happened to be in the portable potty that was at the location. All, all of a sudden, the potty turns over on its side. And um, sure enough, I turned over on its side. And I crawled out of this potty as the dust devil walked by, as the dust devil came by. And uh, when it did, it literally hit the fan, if you know what I'm talking about. You know, there's another interesting uh, story on the film. Jack Arnold, who's a legendary filmmaker, did Creature from the Black Lagoon, it came from outer space, Moss that roared, um, certainly uh, an innovator. He had a problem when he, in one of this, in many scenes, but one in particular in this movie, was a scene where it called for a little boy who gets um, run, who's running across the street and stumbles and is supposed to be killed by a stampede of horses. Well, we didn't have a stampede of horses. We had one horse. And Jack had to figure out a way how to do this dramatic moment with one horse. It was his brilliance that decided that we would dig a hole in the, in the street, put the cameraman and the camera in the hole, and have this horse run by camera two, three, and four times. And each time they ran through, ran by the camera, um, it was a different shot. So one was done with a 50 millimeter lens, one was done with a 75 millimeter lens. So you saw the shots of the nostrils and of the hoofs and of the, of the, the, of the, the shoulders of the horse and so forth. And through editing, you got the sense of the power of the horse who, that killed this child.
we had a difficult time casting the actor who would appear as the super bad guy or be fighting Fred because Fred is so big and so strong and you know this is Fred Williamson the hammer who came who was a football player you know Spear Chucker Jones from from MASH and he was a big guy so when it came time to, to cast the actors who'd be fighting Fred, we had to find somebody who was at least as big as Fred or bigger than Fred, and we had a very difficult time finding a cowboy large enough because most of them are small. And I know we went through many, many guys to find the right one. And, fi and when we did, uh, as part of the audition, he was asked to throw a punch. Well, <laughs> when this particular actor threw a punch, the punch was thrown like this. And I remember uh, Jack's face and Fred's face when they saw that. They just looked at each other and Jack said, do that again. So the guy goes like this. <laughs> so they knew they had some difficulty with that particular actor. I think that particular actor wound up in the background and they finally found somebody that can li literally throw a punch or literally be told how to throw a punch uh, by the stunt coordinator to, uh, to be able to stand up to Fred in the, in the movie. The character that Fred created, uh, Boss, that character Boss that he created, was really a terrific character. I mean, it, it may look like it's Clint, Clint Eastwood in The Good, Bad and the Ugly, but Fred definitely made Boss his own character, and he took it to other heights because the, the sequel was made to Boss, and it was called Adios Amigo. And of course, when Adios Amigo was done, we saw the same Boss character, and now his sidekick was the great Richard Pryor. So, um, to some degree, Boss was the beginning of that of that character that set some motion um, into that sort of uh, western that uh, that that Fred did.